Hi, my name is Alex and I'm a museum ambassador from the ASU Art Museum. Today for Storytime Saturday, I'm going to be reading this book, Picasso, written and illustrated by Mike Venezia. Pablo Picasso was one of the greatest artists of the 20th century. He was born in Malaga, Spain in 1881 and died in France in 1973. Picasso's father was an art teacher at the local school. He encouraged his son to paint and draw. He wanted Picasso to become a great artist someday. I think we have a great artist on our hands. I think we have a mess on our hands. Picasso's painting style changed more over the period of his life than any other great artist. He was always trying new things, new and different things. The painting above was done when he was only 15 years old. This painting was done when Picasso was 57. That's quite a difference between the two paintings, isn't there? Sometimes Picasso would paint things that looked very flat. Sometimes he would paint things that looked so round that you might be able to pick them up off the painting. When Picasso was 19, he left Spain and went to Fr Paris, France. Some of the first paintings he did there look a little bit like the work of other famous French artists. This painting reminds many people of the work done by Toulouse-Lautrec. Some of Picasso's other early paintings remind people of Van Gogh, Gauguin, and Monet. The Blue Period then something happened. Picasso's paintings changed. His work became different from anyone else's. His best friend died and Picasso felt alone and sad. At the same time, none of his paintings were selling and he was almost starving to death. Because of his mood, Picasso began to paint with lots of blue. Blue can be a very sad color. He made all the people in his paintings look lonely and sad. Some people thought Picasso's blue paintings were great. Others, including Picasso's father, thought they were just too strange. This meant his paintings were controversial. The Rose Period. Picasso's blue period ended when he met a girl named Fernande. Fernande and Picasso fell in love, and soon a happier color started showing up in Picasso's paintings. This was the beginning of the Rose Period. Not only were Picasso's colors happier during the Rose Period, but he started painting happier things. Picasso painted a lot of circus people during this time. He often painted them with their animals. The rose period didn't last very long though, because Picasso found a new way to paint that was really exciting and different. And that was Cubism. Cubism was the next style of painting that Picasso developed and made famous. This is a Cubist painting of one of Picasso's friends. The man in the painting looks like he's been broken up in little cubes. That's where the name cubism came from. Look closely. Can you see the man's face? What he was wearing? His hands, a bottle, a glass, and maybe his pet cat? 
Can you find anything else? Cubism is one of the most important periods in the history of modern art. For hundreds of years, artists tried very hard to paint things so they would look real. Then Picasso came along and started to paint people and things that didn't look the way people and things were supposed to look. Picasso was always shocking people, but when he started painting people who had eyes and noses in the wrong places, well, even some of his closest friends thought he had gone too far. Picasso kept working with cubism and changed it over the years. It became much more colorful and flatter looking. It also became easier to see what Picasso was painting. In the painting, Three Musicians, you can see the three musicians and tell what instrument they're playing. In another style that popped up for a while, Picasso painted people who looked more real again. Picasso had just visited Rome, a city filled with statues and monuments. When he returned from his trip, he did a series of paintings in which people look like they've been chiseled out of stone like statues. Granica. In 1937, something happened that made Picasso paint his most, po most powerful and serious painting. During the civil war that was going on in Spain, the small town of Granica was destroyed in, with, by bombs. Thousands of innocent people were killed and injured. Picasso became very angry and used everything he knew to make a painting that would show the world how foolish war was. He named the painting after the town that was destroyed. This is the painting. Picasso used dark colors, cubism, and lots of expression to get his angry feelings across in this painting. He also used size. This painting is huge. It's 12 feet high and 25 feet wide. Many of Picasso's paintings look funny because of the way he moves eyes, noses, and chins around. The amazing thing that these paintings, about these paintings, is how the, much they look like the real person. Look at the painting of Picasso's best friend, Amy Sarvarquez, on the op opposite page. Does it look like the same man shown in the painting below? The thing that made Picasso such a great artist was his originality. He had the imagination to try new and different things through his entire life. Picasso lived to be 92 years old. He was a great painter, but he was, a great, he was great at other things too. He made sculptures, prints, drawings, beautifully colored dishes and bowls. He even made costumes and scenery for plays. It's a lot of fun to see real Picasso paintings. You'll be surprised at how big some of them are. Look for his paintings in your art museum. The pictures in this book came from the museums listed below. If none of these museums is close to you, maybe you can visit one when you're on vacation. So a little blurb from the author. Author and illustrator Mike Venezia has been getting to know the world's greatest artists for as long as he can remember. A graduate of the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, 
Mike believes the best way to introduce children to art and artists is through fun. If children can look at art in a fun way, think of artists as real people, the exciting world of art will be open to them for the rest of their lives. Mike has always admired and been greatly influenced by Picasso. While working on this book, he was inspired to paint the self-portrait that is shown here. If you're feeling particularly inspired, feel free to draw your own self-portrait inspired by Picasso and tag us at ASU Art Museum to show us what you made. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this weekend's Storytime Saturday. Stay tuned for more stories as well as art at home activities. Have a good day.